Hey, what's up everyone? So over the past week, uh, we've had some very interesting price action on VYGR and I wanted to take this time to just kind of have a little discussion with you guys and help you understand kind of how I perceive price action and mainly how I perceive the idea that short sellers are trapped in the trade. Um, as most of you know from my videos, my main edge in trading the market is, is trading short squeezes. So being able to kind of understand the story of what's going on in the chart and identify that there are in fact short sellers trapped gives me a massive edge. And most people don't really talk about stuff like this uh, when they talk about the chart. They just talk about basic you know, wedge patterns and ABCDs, but they don't really have the ability of explaining kind of the story behind what's going on in the market. Because the simple fact is that end of the day, the only thing that truly moves price of any security is buying and selling. And there's four main types of buying and selling. There's number one, a long who buys or a short seller who covers. And on the flip side, there's longs who believe that the stock's gonna go down, so they sell luck in their profits. And also there's a short seller who sells because they believe the stock's gonna go down. All price action can be really uh, explained by these four things. Um, and if you can kind of understand how people are acting and and know how people are, are reacting to a, a stock, then you can kind of create a thesis and make a trading plan. So this is going to be kind of just me talking about VYGR and how I was able to identify that short sellers were trapped and make a trading plan based on that. And now I'm holding the stock into Monday up about $2 per share. So this is going to be a very good lesson for you newer traders and even you more advanced traders who have your footing in the market, but you don't really understand the story behind price action. And hopefully this helps you out. If you have any questions, let me know, but let's just jump right into it. All right, so here is the, the past you know, week of price action on VOIGR. You can see that on the 6th of October, they released news. Um, and it was pretty good news too. They announced that they entered into a licensing option agreement with Pfizer for one of their uh, one of their drugs. I'm not gonna go too in depth in the news, but the most important thing is that VYGR had really strong news on this first day. So we're not gonna go into too much about you know the price action here on this first day. Overall, what we can see is that there were there were sellers, right? It wasn't able to get over four dollars, and it had so many attempts where it tried to get over four, but sellers overall stepped into the market could have been a long who wanted to take profits and they sold at four or it could be you know short sellers who said no this is not worth more than four bucks um, i'm going to short here and hold for the move downwards so you can see that over the next few days it it didn't really do much it just kind of held overall it consolidated and then on friday in the morning it just popped up and it squeezed um, out of nowhere with like no volume and there was no news release here and it, it's kind of funny because you can even look at a website like benzinga they said you know we have no idea why this is spiking there's no news and this was just kind of funny because sure there was no news at that immediate moment but only two days ago there was uh, amazing news for the company with that partnership with pfizer not partnership, but the licensing deal with Pfizer. So one, one quick lesson out of this before we get into the main lesson is that when it comes down to news catalysts, they're not only relevant on the first day when the news drops. News can be relevant for weeks, months after it drops. So make sure you have that context. Uh, not all volume spikes will be because of news dropping at that moment. And we'll talk about exactly why we saw this volume spike. So let's kind of just just do some exploration um, now and just talk about, you know, what happened here. I'm not going to go too far in depth into like the big picture chart. Um, however, it does have some good things to talk about. One thing that you can see about the chart of UIGR is that it's it's pretty beat down, right? The stock has been in a severe downtrend for quite some time. So there could be lots of long-term bag holders. And also there could be a lot of short sellers 
who view this and say, hey, there are so many bag holders, um, it's not going to be able to run very far. And we do see that there's this one very significant level of uh, weekly chart previous support. And if you have watched any of my videos, then there's a very common saying where you will commonly see previous support hold as new resistance. And so understanding that there is this big time previous support at 418, it's not too surprising that for the first few days, it was holding that previous support as new resistance. So now let's just go into some type of uh, like theoretical like price action here. And let's just say for the sake of this, this video that there is a, there's a short seller who has 100,000 shares short. And while that may seem kind of crazy to some of you, like don't forget that there are big time traders, there are hedge funds, institutions. It's not unlikely to believe that there are people who have that big of a position short uh, holding for it to go back down. So we'll just say for the sake of this lesson, there's a short seller who said, no, you know what? There is previous support as new resistance here at 419. This news isn't that good. I'm going to, I'm going to go short hundred thousand shares into that level and hold for it to break down through 330. And that's when I start to lock in profits. And over the next few days, it doesn't break down, right? It just kind of holds, holds. The short seller is holding the position. And don't forget when you hold a short overnight, you do pay some interest on it. So it could be actively losing some money too. And then all of a sudden, um, this stock saw this big volume and it spiked up. And now the short seller is losing money. So what do you think this smart short seller here is gonna do? especially if you have a hundred thousand shares short, they're going to want to cut their loss. And not only would they want to cut their loss, they're going to want to try to exit the trade as close to break even as possible. So this starts to develop the concept of why we see previous resistance hold as new support. And the reason for that is because anyone who sold, anyone who sold, whether it's a long who took profits into 420, or a short seller who went short because they thought it's never going to go back above, they're going to want to buy back in and not miss out on that move upwards. Like if they're long and they sold the first day at like 410 and they see it go up the next few days, one thing you have to understand is that 85% of traders are undisciplined. So they'll want to chase back in and stuff like that. So it's very common to see longs who will sell the first day. They're going to chase back in because they don't want to miss out on that big move. Likewise, a short seller who went short on that first day into the four tens, they're going to want to cover and buy back in. But don't forget, I said that 85% of people are undisciplined in the market. So yes, there are some short sellers who are smart and they respect their plan and they cut the loss, but there's way more short sellers who will hold and hope, right? They're going to hold and hope that the stock will go back down because they don't want to accept the fact of being wrong. So anyone that does hold, if it continues higher, that is how a short squeeze forms. So before we go any further into that, let's just kind of do some, some thinking about what exactly would cause this volume here, right? Well, there was no news drop, but there was a massive volume that kind of popped off at 10 a.m. There could be a few things, right? Number one, it could be some, some hedge fund, some institution who saw the potential here that, hey, there's probably a lot of short sellers in at 410. If we buy enough shares and start to kind of spur the domino effect of short sellers panicking to get out because they don't want to get squeezed, that could be enough to set off the, the ignition and push it above the 410 level. Because if it gets above there, like I said, any short sellers who don't cover are going to get squeezed out. Um, so there's very, you know, lots of different reasons. It could also be a short seller who was holding for the next two days after going short at 410. They're like, man, this thing just isn't breaking down. I don't want to keep holding. I've tried. It's not going down. And they're afraid of being caught in that squeeze. So they cover preemptively 
And if it's a big short with 100,000 shares, uh, that's a big buy order and, and it's going to push the market upwards. And you have all the, all the volume traders who will hit the stock long because they see that volume. And there's a domino effect that will go through and push the stock up. But these are the type of things that I think about when I'm looking at a chart. It's not just the candlesticks. The main thing you have to understand is that the candlesticks are telling a story of what traders are doing and how they are positioned. So on Friday morning, after I saw VYGR break out above this previous resistance, the number one thing I knew was that, hey, I'm not sure whether or not this will hold previous resistance as new support. However, what I do know is that if it does, then those 85% of short sellers who were not disciplined enough to cover are going to get squeezed as it goes higher. And this is the, the kind of core concept of my trading strategy. I don't know whether or not previous resistance will hold as new support, but I take the risk knowing that if it does, shorts are trapped and it's going to move up higher. If it doesn't, I'm disciplined enough to respect my plan and sell for that small loss. And that's how I operate in my trading strategy. Um, so as you can see, it popped up above 419. I went long into this dip and it started squeezing higher. And just by judging from this price action, like you, you can kind of tell that whoever is, is in this from the 410s like short, they're really trapped because this thing just grinded upwards. And also because I have confidence in knowing that shorts are trapped, I'm not going to be quick to lock in my profits, right? I know that as long as the chart keeps developing and keeps holding previous reasons as new support, there's no reason to sell until we see that sign of weakness and backside. So it just kept grinding upwards, tested daily 200 moving average. I did expect a small pullback there, but I said, hey, as long as this can hold higher lows and hold previous resistance in the 450s, it still is within my parameters of being a short squeeze. And that you can see it pulled back, it held, and then boom, got the next, next massive short who covered or long that just hit the ask, knowing that shorts are trapped and it went up even higher and it hasn't broken trend at all. And even going into after hours, holding higher lows, no reason to believe that it's weak. And I had swung this into the end of afters. And as you can see, right before the close, it hit a new high of day into the 580s. So, so far right now it's Sunday night. I am holding VYGR overnight. And I do expect that there will be some type of gap up tomorrow. It could be its first red day tomorrow, but I will be here at pre-market with my trade buddy community. And we'll be watching to see uh, like where those signs of weakness are. But that's just a little breakdown of how I view the price action. Um, like I said, you know, the main thing that I have kind of learned is that it's not just about the chart patterns and the candlestick patterns. You have to really be able to, to look deeper and use the charts as a like way to look at the story of how are traders acting in this and how are traders playing this. And if you can find a situation, if you're long, if you can find an area where that there are lots of shorts trapped, that's a big edge for you. And if you're a short seller, if you can see that there's a lot of bag holders, that's a edge for you. And that's how I kind of operate in the market. So there's a quick little video for you. Hopefully that helps you out. Most people on YouTube won't explore this type of topic. They will just, just say, hey, you know, there's a flat top wedge, you, you buy the top. And they're not going to explain really what's going behind the scenes of why the price action is moving. So hopefully that gives you some insight in how I read charts. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video and want to see more like this, hit the thumbs up button and also subscribe. Hit the bell next to it to be notified of future videos. And I'll see you in the next video.